Hello, this is Dr. Armand bringing you another exciting lecture in General Chemistry 2. In this lecture, we'll be looking at a, uh, practice problems involving uh, writing equilibrium expressions, determining the value of Q and which way will the reaction uh, shift. And then finally, we'll be looking at the product and quotient rule and examples of those. And so in this video, it's more of uh, practice problems. If you want to learn about the uh, concepts of each one of these, then you need to look at previous videos posted. Also, when you're working through these uh, problems on the video, I highly recommend that you first pause it, try to work out the problem, and then unpause and continue and see if you did it correctly. That's a good way to judge if you know the material. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So in this first set of examples, what we're looking at is to write the correct equilibrium expression for the following reactions. <clears throat> now remember in equilibrium, there are two types of equilibrium. There are heterogeneous equilibrium, where the reactants and products are of different phases, and there are homogeneous equilibrium, where the reactants and products are the same phase. Now remember for heterogeneous equilibrium, solids and liquids are not included in the equilibrium expression. So we disregard those from the equilibrium expression. And that's because they don't affect equilibrium. If you'd like to know more, look at a, an earlier video posted for that detailed explanation. So when we write the equilibrium expression, it's K, and since if we're doing concentration, it would be KC equals the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. And the coefficients in front of the products and reactants is what that concentration is raised to. So in this first example, KC equals, now remember, <clears throat> only solids and liquids are not included. So here, HCl is aqueous, O2 is a gas, H2O is a liquid, that's not included, and Cl2 is a gas. And so the only thing not included is H2O because it's a liquid. And so HCl is raised to the fourth, and then we have O2. And that's divided by the reactants. Uh, Cl2 raised to the second or squared and that would be the equilibrium expression for this reaction. We move to the second example. In the second example we have a homogeneous equilibrium. All the reactants and products are gases and so again if we want to write the Kc it's going to be products over reactants so the concentration of PCl3 raised to the two Br2 raised to the third. And then divided by reactants, and again the coefficients tell you what to raise that reactant or product uh, to. So this is the equilibrium expression for the second example. In the third example, we have another heterogeneous equilibrium. So again, solids and liquids are not included. So KO2 is not included. And KOH is not included because those are both solids. And so therefore, KC, which is products over reactants, would look like this. And so remember when you're writing equilibrium expressions is products over reactants. The coefficients are what the products and reactants are raised to, what power, and solids and liquids are not included in the equilibrium expression.
Next, we're going to look at a few examples involving the product and quotient rule. So what this means, if you multiply an equation by some coefficient, how does that affect the value of K? Or if you flip the equation, how will that affect the value of K? So remember, when you multiply a coefficient by an equation, you raise the K to that power. If you flip the equation, that means products become reactants, reactants become products, then the new K is one over the original K. So again, a more detailed explanation of this is in, a, is in the Equilibrium Part 1 lecture that I recommend you watch before attempting these problems. So in this first example, it gives us the original equilibrium equation, and it gives us Kp. Again, temperature is not important here, except that at different temperatures you have different Ks. That's why it's stating the K here. We want to know what's the K for the following reactions. So if you look in the first reaction and compare it to the uh, original reaction, you see that we multiplied everything by 3. So the new K, we'll call it K prime, is equal to the original K raised to the third power. And the reason it's raised to the third power is because we multiplied the equation by 3. So therefore, the new K would equal 3.5 e to the negative 4 raised to the third. So K would equal 4 different calculator but could not find it oh here it is and we get a k of 4.29 to 9 e to the negative 11. So when you have a negative exponent for k, that means that an equilibrium is mostly reactants of very few products. Now if we look at the second equation here, and compare it to the original equation, you see that what we've done is we flipped the equation and we multiplied it by one half. So the new K would equal one over the old K raised to the one half. Again, the reason we put one over K is because we flipped the equation. The reason we raised it to the one half is because we multiplied the equation by one half. So K equals 1 divided by 1. And we get... 53.5. Let me double check. Yep. And so when you have a K of 53.5, I mean, since it's between 0.1 and 100, it's going to be kind of an almost even ratio of reactants to products with the products being slightly more than the reactants. Then we go to our second uh, question. Here again, we're given another uh, equation with the value of k. It says, what's the k for the following equations? So in the first one, we compare it to the uh, original equation. You see that what we've done here is we've multiplied everything by 3 halves. So then k 
the new K would equal the original K to the three halves. So therefore we would have K equals So K would be one point one two times ten to the negative six. We double check. So again, a very small K means there's mostly reactants at equilibrium, very few products. Now we look at the last example and we compare this equation to the original equation. And you see what we've done is we've multiplied everything by four and we flipped the equation. So the new K, K prime would equal one over K to the fourth. And so here K would equal one divided by the original K raised to the fourth power. And so K equals Seven point three five e to the fifteenth. Let me double check. Yes. And so with a very large K that tells you at equilibrium you're mostly product with very little reactant. So now we're going to look at, you know, determining which way uh, the reaction will shift in order to regain equilibrium. And so that determinant is based on the value of Q. And so again, if Q is greater than K, that means we have more products, it's going to shift to form more reactants. So that means you have too much product, you need to make more reactant. And if Q is less than K, it's going to shift to make more product. So that means you have a lot of, a lot of reactant, and very little product, so it's going to shift to make more product until equilibrium is established. And of course, when Q equals K, at equilibrium. So now it gives us the concentrations or the moles and volume of our uh, reactants and products. And we want to know, is this system at equilibrium? If not, in which way will it proceed? Here we've got to find the concentration of SO2, O2, and SO3. So be 1.25 molar, 0.85 molar, and 0.22 molar. So now we set up and then solve for Q. Again, it's products over reactants. So the product is SO3 and it's squared, so 0.22 squared divided by SO2 is squared, so 
1.25 squared times O2. And so depending on the value of Q, this will tell us which way it will shift. And we get 0 0.0364. Let me double check. Yep. And we look, KC is 0 0.042. So here, Q is less than K. So if Q is less than K, we have more reactant than product, so it's going to shift to form more product. So it would be Q is less than K, shift to form more product is D. Now we want to know, given this equation and its KC, determine which way reaction will proceed at the following conditions. So again, we have to write, determine the Q for these different concentrations. Again, it's products over reactants, so 0 0.02 squared times, and O2 is 0 0.005, divided by H2O steam, 0 0.030 squared. Again, it's products over reactants, and we raise the products and reactants to the coefficients of the reactants and products. And we get 0 0.00222. Let me double check. And so here, Q is less than K. So we'll shift to form products. And then in the la next one, again, we have to find Q. and we get 25. So here Q is greater than K, so it's gonna to shift to form more reactant. Double check. And so this is how you determine which way the reaction will shift in order to reestablish equilibrium when you have some non-equilibrium concentrations. Well, that's all for this lecture. Uh, make sure you go through, pause, work out the problems, and then check your answers. And until next time, Dr. Armand signing off.